travel agencies are mostly run by women. And I would constantly in my neighborhood see, you know, women who are sitting in a cafe or going to a soul cycle class and then having these conversations where one would tell the other like, oh, I just went to this amazing place in Patagonia. And the other one would book it online. And I would be like, no, you like, you're not getting paid for the work that you're doing. Like this is actually a job. And either you don't know it's a job or you don't think that it's a job that you could have. Meanwhile, the other person is like booking it online and encountering all of those problems that we know exist when you're going through an OTA, an online travel agency, like an Expedia or booking.com. So I felt like if you could monetize this connection, there was a, like a big business here, but there's also a real grassroots sort of movement that you can have of offering really sort of fun, interesting, and meaningful work to women that don't have it right now. Love that. I love that. Let's break it all the way down because I don't think I really understand. We've used travel agents in the past. I'm like, they don't necessarily charge you, but how do they get paid? Yeah. Is it costing you more? Do you get perks? Like just break it all the way down. Cause I don't think, well, I certainly didn't understand how the travel agency business worked. And I think most people until they use one don't. And so there really is this hump that you have to get people over the first time of sort of understanding like, where's this money going? Um, so it's easiest to use an example. So let's say, uh, so I live in Tribeca in New York and the Greenwich is one of my favorite hotels here. It's owned by Robert De Niro. It's super chic. It's very local, um, has a lot of sort of New York flavor. If you were to call the Greenwich today and book your room, it's going to cost, let's say $600 a night. If I call the Greenwich as your travel agent and I book it for you, it's going to cost the same, but you're going to get your breakfast included for two and they have a really good breakfast and it's not cheap. You're going to get a credit, usually about a hundred to $150 for the spa, which is the best spa in the neighborhood. And you're going to get a room upgrade if it's available when you check in. So you're going to actually get better value than you'd get booking on your own. What they're going to do for me, because I brought them this great customer is they're going to pay me commission when you check out. So you don't pay us because the hotels pay us. And the big thing to know here is that they pay us less than they would to an OTA and that's why they prefer working with us as we give them customers, we give them guests that we've sort of talked to and said, hey, you're going to love the Greenwich because of this, because actually it's a very unique hotel. It's not right for everybody. So when we send them a client, we're sending them somebody who's sort of been vetted and is more likely to be a happy person and they pay us less commission for it. So we get paid for our work. They get a happy customer. You get a great trip with better value and you don't actually pay anybody. Which is nice. I mean, there's so much value in that. And there's also, it takes the legwork and you know, you're getting... We talked about that human connection piece. I want to go back to that because I think that's something that we come back to time and time again. A human connection was taken away from us, and we all realize, like, oh wait, we do <laughs> like people. Yeah, <laughs> even as a closeted introvert, it was like, oh yeah, like I miss being around people and having these interactions and being able to go to a soul cycle class or whatever the case may be. Uh, but anybody that's had an experience, and I think my best friend Michael with Airbnb was in like France and shows up, you know, late at night and, you know, the Airbnb, there's no one to call, you know, they're not letting them in the room. They don't speak the same language. There's air, you know, Airbnb as a corporation is not accessible for you to get someone who really gives a shit to find out why you can't get into your apartment or whatever in, in Paris. And so I think all of us, or some of us have, have run into a situation where, we didn't use a travel agent. We didn't have anyone to talk to, whether it was booking.com or Expedia or Airbnb or VRBO or whatever the case is. And you were just kind of left holding the bag. You didn't have any recourse. And I think that's so important that you actually can have human interaction. You're getting someone with uh, values and opinions and, and insights that, that have been there and also someone to troubleshoot if you get yourself into a situation. Yeah. And I think that that is, that's a really important distinction. Like when we're talking about things that, that are sort of a direct rental from a person, because you could, you could, you know, put that under the realm of like human connection too. like, Hey, I'm going to stay in your home and I'm going to get this really local vibe, but like, guess what? You're not there when the like toilet explodes and you're not there when the key doesn't work. And so all of that stuff when I go on vacation, I don't want to deal with the same crap that I'm dealing with at home. I want somebody to take care of things for me because I'm trying to wrangle my children and I'm trying to keep up with work and I'm trying to have some fun along the way.